Hi, I'm Luana Jones and I'm at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and I'm here with the artist Anne Farron and we'll just be talking about her work briefly today. So Anne Farron, what was your initial inspiration? Like, where did it all begin? Well, I went to art school in 1982. It's probably before you were born. <laughs> but actually when I went to art school I was already like I was 31 or 32. So I'd, I had done other things before. Um, but I had this kind of, you know, this desire to, to do it. And, that, and then at a certain point, it's, you know, you have to do these things. So, and fortunately then, it was probably easier for a mature student to do that than it is now because, you know, economic times were a bit more supportive. I started making photographic work in my last year. And then I, just, I was just very lucky because that first, that first work is actually in this gallery's connection, I'm proud to say. Um, so it was picked up for quite important group exhibition. That was very lucky because it gave me confidence that I probably would have struggled to achieve if I hadn't had that you know, good fortune early on. Yeah. But I shifted into this area in 1995 and that was when I was asked to do an artist residency at Hyde Park Barracks, which is in fact just down the road from the art gallery. And that was what really started me thinking about this country's past and the fact that for me it had barely existed until then, I hadn't really thought about it. And that seemed to me, when I thought about it, quite extraordinary that you can live in a country all your life and it feels like it had no, nothing happened before you got here. And that there were things in that past, the fact that we started out as a convict culture, not just a colonial culture, but a convict one, that were still kind of working away in the present, but weren't very often thought about or understood. I mean, I think that's changed now. And now I think we're probably obsessed with memory. This work is, um, it's focused on two sites in Tasmania where there once upon a time were prisons for female convicts in the 19th century. The thing that really is sort of drew me to these sites, apart from being interested in the history, was wondering where on earth it had disappeared to. Because when you go to these places, and in fact I've only photographed one of them here, there's virtually nothing to see. And yet you know from the historical record that there was all of this stuff going on in the 19th century. And yet somehow it's both disappeared and it's been to a certain extent forgotten about. So that, that interested me. So initially, instead of using conventional mediums such as paper, why on metal, why print at such a big scale? I have thought of the idea of printing them onto metal. So I had to find out if that was possible, and of course it turns out that it is possible. And I have to say it doesn't show up very well here, because in a museum, no one's going to put the amount of light on it that I would like to see on it. Um, but if you can get an, an, a certain enough light, these are actually you know, empty areas in the metal, and they really shine. So as people move around this work, what they're seeing is changing all the time. But then the other thing that I've noticed here where the light isn't the light that I'm describing, it's much more controlled, they look more sombre. They look darker, they look heavier. In a way, they look more serious and melancholy. And I have to say, I don't mind that either. Yeah, it really adds to the meaning. I understand that you've got some work downstairs that's also dealing with Australian landscape, history and place. Maybe. I wonder if we could go and have a look at that. Yeah, sure, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We've got quite a bit of light. Yes, you've got the light, you've got the light I wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Very similar question to the one that you asked me. Why this place? Um, well, it's pretty much based on my imagination as a child because um, my ancestors or my grandparents and their ancestors owned a farm and I used to play out in the paddocks and it was all about when I remembered it was like the changing of sky and how you can stand in one place and for it to change and it was that's why I used the color palette that I did because it wasn't natural tones or it wasn't so realistic as it should have been. It must have taken you a long time to come to this what you call this kind of collection of techniques. Yeah well first I started with painting as you can see and I, I like to explore mediums so I put tissue paper on the back of my boards and then I decided that I really enjoyed I actually learnt to do free embroidery and stuff in my textiles class and I found that this medium was much more me and I really enjoyed to do it, doing it and I actually grew up with my grandmother who taught me to 
um, so and it was really special and emotional and so there's very... there's a sense of attachment to the place through your grandmother yeah. and through those activities yeah and it was and with sewing it's um, with free embroidery it's it's in your imagination it kind of comes to you as you're going and you can go off on different limbs and stuff and it was very yeah it's quite emotional so like painting but much slower yeah much slower. I'm fascinated with these threads, these dangling threads. Yeah, it was all it was about um, a lot about the imagination. I think it was the the day group, like the landscape and how it deteriorates, and it's a lot like material. It can be one thing, and then it can be a thread, and you can make it into something beautiful. They make you want to touch them. You know that, don't you? <laughs> What do you like? <laughs> they, I mean, the other thing seems to me is like you know they suggest roots. Yeah. And but they also are something that's to do with the process. So they're both things, which I think is one of the things that makes them really successful. Yeah. They work on both levels. That that to me is really great. That's another thing I love about my artwork is that it has so many interpretations, and its meaning isn't really from me. Yeah. It's from the audience yeah. itself. No, I think that's. that's that's really a sign of, you know, strong work. Look, Loana, I really have to thank you for showing me your work. It was, it was fantastic. Thank you and congratulations. It's thank you. Congratulations really to you too. I, I loved getting into the history of it. It's really exciting. Yeah, well, I think it's we actually have quite a lot in common. Yeah. yeah.